acceptable place. And from this we deduce the basis of the whole chart, especially since most of the planets and the luminaries take note. The sun and the moon send their influence toward this sign. All the luminaries, the five luminaries and the sun and the moon send their influence to this sign, Aries. You see, that's what astrology is all about. It's about the waxing and the waning of the sun from summer to winter and from daytime to nighttime and the waxing and the waning of the moon from full moon to new moon and the waxing and the waning of the planets because there's one that people don't consider um, very often isn't it that the planets are also waxing and waning yes Jupiter exalts in Cancer Pisces exalts uh, sorry Venus exalts in Pisces the sun exalts in Aries. We've learnt that. We've learnt that in, in my videos. How the sun, when it comes out of Pisces and is born in Aries, exalts. That's the sign of the sun's exaltation because now the sun has returned into the, the glory, the glorious spring and summer seasons. So not only does the sun exalt and, and of course the moon exalts in Taurus, so does Jupiter. So does Mars. Mars exalts in Capricorn. Mercury exalts in Virgo. What that means is that they, their maximum influence is affected in those signs. So they are waxing and waning. So we have seven orbs, seven orbs in the solar system that are waxing and waning. And these are controlling everything that happens in the solar system these waxings and wanings. So um, what I'm going to be doing for the next, uh, we've got another 30 minutes, um, if, if that's cool with everybody. Um, if I get thumbs down, I won't, <laughs> but I imagine everybody would be excited to know that we're going to spend the next 30 minutes dealing with these seven principles. Okay, now in the Kybalion, and I have a couple of versions, but today I'm going to be... Well, they're all the same, the Kybalians, but I mean, this uh, version that I have also has the, um, the emerald tablets. And uh, I will eventually get around to um, discussing the emerald tablets on a subsequent uh, webinar. But I think this will be very profound and it might generate enough questions for the uh, next hour that uh, we will um, probably be able to just consider this for today. Um, and that's pretty much a good lesson. There's, there's so much. I'm only going to be talking about the, the, the small explanations uh, or the short explanations because in this um, book there are long explanations. So I'm only going to be reading choice portions of the short explanations so that we can understand these seven principles. As I've already said, through my videos, you've already grasped that the universe is mental. That's out of the way. We've already grasped the law of the principle of correspondence. That's out of the way. We've discussed that. As above, so below. I've thrashed that in all my videos. Uh, the principle of vibration. I think we've done that. The, the principle of, of vibration and energy. Um, the principle of polarity. We've done that. Good and evil. Summer and winter. So this is what the science is all about. It's all science. Uh, the principle of rhythm. The principle of cause and effect. Yes, we've studied that. We see that the seven orbs are the cause and the effect is what we see. And the principle of gender. Oh yes, we've done that. Electri electricity and magnetism. And the, um, the elements that have their polarities. Feminine 
and male and female, masculine and female polarities. So um, now the introduction of the uh, Kybalion makes this statement. The purpose of this work is not the enunciation of any spe special philosophy or doctrine, but rather it is to give to the students a statement of the truth that will serve to reconcile the many bits of occult knowledge that they may have acquired, but which are apparently opposed to each other and which often serve to discourage and disgust the beginner in the study. Excuse me. Our intent is not to erect a new temple of knowledge, but rather to place in the hands of the student a master key with which he may open the many inner doors in the temple of mystery through the main portals he has already entered. So, um, you see, it's a master key. And in fact, that's what I've given for the title of three of my videos. The key, the master key to the holy science. Because without it, you can't, you cannot enter. You can't understand these things. And this is why we have academia denouncing astrology as a pseudo-science. And we have the religionists telling you that it's from the devil. Because it is very, very powerful science. It is the master key to entering the realms of metaphysics, of spirituality and mysticism. And mysticism is the baptism in the Jordan River, you see. One of the deacons of Ares is Eridanus. And also, it's also a deacon, it's also, Eridanus runs from, um, well actually it's a, mm, it's a deacon of Taurus, not Ares, but it runs through Ares, it runs through Pisces and Aquarius. And it has to do with opening the higher chakras. So that's the key. And it goes on to say in the introduction to the Kybalion, it says, Hermes Trismegist Trismegistus, the scribe of the gods who dwelt in old Egypt in the days when the present race of men was in its infancy, contemporary with Abraham, and if the legends be true, an instructor of that venerable sage, Hermes was and is the great central son of occultism the great central sun of occultism, the esoteric, the freeing path of esotericism. Whereas exoterism, or the exoteric faith, uh, is the enslaving faith. It's the religion of the books. Those rays have served to illumine the countless teachings, sorry, whose rays have served to illumine the countless teachings which have been promulgated, promulgated since, this time, since his time. All the fundamental and basic teachings embedded in the ex esoteric teachings of every race may be traced back to Hermes. This is why I said rather confidently before that even though Marsilio Ficino translated the, the Corpus Hermeticum in the late 1400s, the Hermetists were around. They were in Jewish um, Kabbalah in Spain in the 10th and 11th century when the Inquisitions were starting to happen and the Huguenots and the Waldenses and the Cathars and Albigenses and Lollards, etc. In the, in the Middle Ages, that was all Hermetic wisdom. It's always been there. It has never disappeared because it underpins all the theologies. And syncretism will prove that and reunite that and bring back the unity of, her, of hermetic philosophy and bring back the universal true religion that belongs to man and is our inheritance and is our right to practice. Yeah. Because it has enemies. It has corporate enemies. It always has been corporate enemies. Corporate Rome, for instance. 
Um, even the most ancient teachings of India undoubtedly have their roots in the her original hermetic teachings. I'm reading this to share with you, to make you understand or help you to understand that um, we have a great tradition in the West. We don't need to neglect it and uh, feel that it may somehow be inferior to Eastern or any other indigenous well-developed philosophy. They're all saying the same thing. It's all about occult science, all of it. And in fact, I've proven that with my videos because the characters are all the same. They all have the same job. They all have the same ordeals. They, ha they all have the same trials. They all have the same tribulations and friends and characters. You know, there's always a hero with his best buddy, you know, Jesus and St. Peter. Well, it turns out Jesus is the son and St. Peter is uh, Jude Peter. Yeah, the two big boys in the solar system. So it's always going to be like that, you know, King Arthur and Lancelot. It's always going to be the hero with his favourite right-hand man and a few good buddies. You know, Jesus and, and Peter, James and John. Peter, James and John. They always follow the Lord. Well, that's Mercury. Um, Mercury. Uh, that would be um, Mars and, and Jupiter. <laughs> there you go. So... Um, but of course, the importance of that statement too is the antiquity of Hermes. You see, Hermes comes from a, another time, from another higher consciousness wave that has uh, visited this earth and produced many, many relics which testify to the fact that it was...